Thank you, Jim, and to Jamie Gass, who I worked on the survey with. Um, it was a lot of fun to do. We were, we were thinking about how, how to come at this. Um, normally, we do one survey. You know, we'll, we'll do likely voters statewide, uh, all ages, match the demographics. But in this case, we really wanted to look at the stakeholders in terms of history and social studies in the classroom. So uh, as Jim indicated, we, we have sort of a three-pronged research uh, uh, challenge. Uh, and it was certainly all of that. Um, we completed the last surveys yesterday. <laughs> um, those were the legislator surveys. Um, uh, the, the total research package was 500 um, parents across the state, which is a, an accurate snapshot in terms of the gender, the geography, uh, county-based um, quotas. And we did that by random digit dial. Um, so there's a bit of drilling down to get to that core group of people who are young and who are parents, because most of the people who respond to surveys are older folks who have the time to talk. Um, the survey was random digit dialed, but with cell phones and landlines, so we were able to capture a lot of young folks with that. Um, we also polled teachers uh, by a list of teachers across the state who were history or social studies teachers. The point of contact was the actual school, so during that week, that field week of May 1st to the 9th, some of the research was setting up appointments, some of the, re the, the surveys were done from the school uh, on our phone banks. And the final component was the legislator surveys, um, 25 of which, a small snippet of the 200, 100, uh, 200 state representatives and state senators, um, it was an interesting field time because, as you know, over the last week, and I'm sure the Senate President will, will understand this, the legislature was taking up the budget, and this was also the local filing deadline uh, at the local city and town halls. So candidates were scrambling back and forth to their districts in addition to looking at the, the core budget issues. Um, three totally different areas, sort of on the tripod of history and social studies, Three different methodologies, one random digit, one using a list, and the third uh, person-to-person uh, -person interviews. Um, the, the quotas for the, um, the, the parent survey um, are very similar to what we expect in terms of likely voters in November. We expect a gender break of 47-53 with more women voting. Um, all expressed that they were very likely or somewhat likely to vote in the presidential election. Uh, and by party affiliation, for, for those of you aware of the party uh, enrollment in Massachusetts, 36% Democrat, 12 Republican, 52 Independent. Now, as you know, in the legislator component, the legislative survey had vastly different gender and party proportions. It was more like 75-25 in terms of male-female and 75-25 in terms of party affiliation because that is in fact what the composition of the legislature is today. So in our first question, and we were basically looking at four or five questions, um, and the sort of break-in question was just to get a general sense of where we're at today. And so the question is, on a scale of one to seven, which scale best represents your view of the overall quality of the public schools here in Massachusetts? Not necessarily their own local schools, but just their perception of schools in Massachusetts. And you can see these bar charts from one to seven, um, with uh, seven being very high quality, one being very low quality or poor quality. What the difference between teachers and legislators was, it's almost exact. If you look at the means, 5.13 for teachers, 5.12 for legislators, which is fascinating for me as a pollster, given the different subsets and the different methodologies, the fact that it's that close. Now, obviously, within the bars, you see um, s some movement. But in terms of the mean indicator, 
very consistent. In terms of parents, it was a little bit lower, 4.66, in terms of point of contact for parents. Uh, the most prominent response was number five, sort of above average but not great. Um, you also saw minimal um, uh, consideration on the lower end. I'm looking at three and two percent, uh, but, but quite high uh, from four up which was uh, a little bit less than the, the legislators, but not bad. In terms of demographics within, and again, I'll, I'll limit the demographic analyses for the parent survey because it was 500 and the subsets are larger. The demographics by gender are that women are more optimistic about the, 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 the state of schools right now, men less so. Uh, you still see that five number as being the dominant number uh, but many more women uh, were giving it a four and a five, less so for men. In terms of the regions of the state, I thought I'd give you just sort of a cut of the state for those of you who are, who are residents. Um, the Worcester West area, which is uh, Worcester County and west of that, which is uh, Berkshire, Hamden, Hampshire, Franklin, and Worcester counties, 4.58, a little bit low. Any, which is northeast, is the, the big chunk of Massachusetts, Middlesex and Essex counties, a really high 4.84. Uh, Suffolk County, which is obviously Boston, Revere, Winthrop, and Chelsea, a little bit lower, 4.20. Southeast Mass Cape, 4.63. That would include Norfolk, Plymouth, Bristol, sort of the, the arm down, Barnstable, Dukes, Nantucket, 4.63. In terms of political party, um, Democrats much more optimistic about um, the quality of, of education. 4.76, um, some very high numbers, some very high uh, numbers, fives and sixes. Uh, Republicans the least optimistic, 4.39. Independents at 4.65, I hear some chuckles with the Republican number. Age. Um, Pretty consistent, although the 36 to 45, uh, and I think as expected here, was the most optimistic, 4.86, uh, and on up, 4.60, 4.44 for the older parents. You'll notice that the 18 to 35, a little shaky in terms of their outlook, 4.06, and the mean really doesn't tell the whole story. You have some students on the back end at number six rating it quite high, almost as high as the 36 to 45s. That's, that's the brown bar on the, uh, on the right and the 18 to 35s. But look at the very left bar, the blue bar, um, high, poor, poor mark. So obviously it shows that students and that people entering into the workforce are trying to enter into the workforce in the youngest age category polarized if they had a good or a bad experience. Whereas at 36 to 45, they've realized that their education is connecting with real life and work. The demographics among people who view the world differently. People who say the state is on the right track, uh, right track much more optimistic. 5.13 mean versus 4.12 uh, for the wrong track. Um, Question seven, do you think that all Massachusetts public school students should study our nation's founding and history? Teachers and legislators, amazing numbers here. So what we do know at the outset is that we have a, a positive view about the quality of public schools, and now we're transitioning into talking about history and the nation's founding, and we see even among legislators, 88% teachers, as one would expect, 97%. That charts a little bit uh, misleading in the sense that it looks like legislators are less optimistic. Uh, the truth is that 0% said no <laughs> among legislators. Uh, the other 12% were combined, undecided, or refused based on whatever their own initiatives were. Do you think uh, uh, among parents, pretty good numbers, 95%. Um, very good sign in terms of beginning to think about possible action uh, points, action agendas. Um, question eight, do you believe Massachusetts should focus more attention on educating students in US history? Now, again, going into this, 
we really didn't know where parents stood. I think we kind of had an idea where teachers and legislators would, would come down on this. But we know that parents are dealing with bullying issues with children. There are childhood obesity issues in the classroom in addition to math, science, English, and a host of other issues that parents are juggling to try and make ends meet. Among teachers, again, a great number, 97%. Legislators, 84%. Those are tremendous numbers in the polling world. You never get 75 or 80% of people to agree on anything, uh, virtually. And so these 80s and 90s numbers are amazing. 82% among parents, a very strong showing. So that kind of lays the foundation before we get into MCAS. Um, but before we do that, I just want to give you just a quick visual of how powerful that previous number is in question eight. No gender issue, no age issue. It's blue, 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 strong, strong, strong. No drop off for the most part. That's party, right track, wrong track. You have a little bit of dip in Suffolk County, but again, it's not a significant subset. What we estimate for the November election, for example, is that um, Suffolk County will represent about 8% of the general election in November. It has a higher percentage in primaries, Democratic primaries especially nine or 10%, sometimes higher, but in a general election, it's 8%. So not a big subset, but still not a bad number either. Do you think there's a correlation between the test as a link to performance? So we asked, passing a, 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 is there a correlation between Massachusetts students not having to pass a history test and the fact that they don't do well in history as they do in English, math, and science. And we preceded this question by giving them the, the statistics on it, that Massachusetts students score well uh, on, uh, in a number of international and national tests on uh, English, math, and science, but haven't performed in the top 10 in history. And so uh, given that, 50% still believe that there's a strong correlation among parents, 24% somewhat of a correlation, that's a great springboard. Again, the demographics here are, are fairly consistent. Again, um, men were more emphatic about the strong correlation, but women softer but still supportive. So the combined correlation numbers were very consistent. So it's just a question of the intensity. The support is there, and this poll pretty much um, has identified that. By area, the same, same kind of thing. Strong feelings in southeastern Mass and Cape. Strong feelings in Worcester West. But the total support, again, blue and red bars combined, very consistent. And then the final question, do you support restoring the passage of a US history MCAS test as a high school graduation requirement? We did provide the information um, about what, what the background was. Um, and I'll just read you the question, because this is, this is the question that was the closest of all. Um, uh, for the class of 2012, U.S. history was scheduled to join English, math, and science as subjects in which students would have to pass an MCAS test to graduate from high school. But in 2009, the Commissioner of Education recommended, and the State Board of Elementary Education agreed, to postpone the U.S. history graduation requirement. And then the question. Do you support restoring the passage of a U.S. history MCAS test as a high school graduation requirement? And here are the numbers among teachers and legislators. Again, the combine on teachers is 63 and legislators 64. And for parents, it's 59. Not bad, a little bit less. Um, some, the, the opposed somewhat and the opposed uh, strongly is 36%. That's a great place to start in terms of thinking about policy going forward. In terms of the demographics, uh, men stronger than women in terms of requiring the MCAS. In terms of the age, you can see the, the older uh, folks are in the 56 plus. I think they realize, and, and, uh, and, and after hearing the remarks today, um, that the Nostalgia works in terms of thinking about history and social studies and the value in terms of life's lessons. Uh, right track, wrong track. Closest group were Democrats, 50% support, 46 against. 
Republicans overwhelmingly supported 80 to, 7, uh, 80 to 18. And the all important independent uh, category, and if you've seen any of, any of uh, the press releases that we put out or, or any of my interviews, you know how important that other category is. 52% of Massachusetts voters are independents, and that's really where the rubber hits the road, not only on ballot test questions, but elections. By area, a very similar dynamic, although Southeast Mass Cape, very strong in terms of supporting MCAS. A lot of older folks living on, uh, uh, on the Cape uh, backing this up. Nothing, over, nothing under 50% here. Uh, from the teacher's survey, we did ask a separate question that wasn't on all of the uh, other surveys. Uh, basically asking teachers, is your ex in your experience as a teacher, do you find that there's a connection between the subjects that are tested and those that are taught in schools? We wanted to identify not only that there was a connection, but how strongly. And you can see from this question, 53% of teachers saying there is definitely a connection somewhat 24 for a total of 77, that's really powerful. And from the legislative survey, the question about money. Uh, we were trying to find out, um, despite their personal opinions, do you believe there's money to administer an MCAS test, a history MCAS test? The, basically the question asked, when the Commissioner and Board of Education, uh, Elementary and Secondary Education postponed the U.S. history uh, graduation requirement in 2009, they cited the $2.4 million annual cost of administering the test. The question is, can we find the money? And legislators who know budgets said, whether they supported it or not, we can find the money for this, 68% to 12% who said no. So our conclusions were several, were, were several. We know that the quality of education in Mass gets high marks, and it does vary by demographics. We know that public school students should study U.S. history, and that comes, again, from that tripod of legislator, teacher, and parent. Um, we know that more focus <clears throat> is needed, and we have the range from 82% on the parent end to 97% on the teacher end. We also have learned that there's a strong correlation between testing and outcomes, the demographics support that. On the, it, on the issue of requiring MCAS um, uh, and restoring an MCAS exam, 59 to 64% support this from all three groups. And from the legislators, we've learned that it's not even close. The issue of money is a non-issue, and this is coming from the legislature. 68% say the money's there. And that's my final uh, thought for the day, and I'll take any questions.